Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new, my name is Jessica Alexandria. I'm the creator of Bahati Life Apothecary and I'm a professional astrologer, tarot, and intuitive reader. We're gonna be talking about the full moon that's gonna be happening this side of Capricorn. And for those of you guys that have been with me since day one, you guys know I love a Capricorn full moon. I know that people don't love it, but I do. I do, honey. I really do. I love Capricorn energy. I always have, always will, I think. Pretty sure. I have the chart pulled up in front of me and yeah, let's go ahead and dive right in. I have some cards pulled just because I couldn't wait <laughs> for this. I really couldn't wait for, you know, to see what was the core of this for the full moon. Um, I'm not disappointed. There are a lot of cards here. I have uncertainty, I have impediment, I have initiation, I have evolution. All of those cards are retrograde. But you know what isn't retrograde or reversed, I should say? The Emperor and the card of transformation. Let me say that again. I have four cards that are reversed and I said retrograde, but they are reversed. Uncertainty, impediment, initiation, and evolution. Evolution is when time requires us to shift and evolve into a more advanced state of being. Wow, I'm good with words. Pats on the back for Jess, right? Initiation is when we are in the process of prep, we are in the process preparing of preparation for who and what we are to become, which is another thing of a higher, a higher vibration and purpose. Impediment are the things that stand in front of us that block and barricade us from our goals or from certain things, events, people, situations, circumstances. Fingers crossed for our highest and greatest good. Uncertainty is that feeling of uncomfortable, uncomfortability in the unknown. Those are the cards that are retrograde, my loves. That is the energy of the eclipse. One of the or one of the aspects of this of this full moon eclipse. And why I want to start off with that is because it shows us that those are the areas that spirit, the planets, is work are working on the most, the greatest. It is hands on. It is evolving as best as it can. And it doesn't, I just heard the word eluding. There's so much that spirit doesn't want you to run away from, especially at this time in life and in history, to the point where it has you revisiting, returning back to certain status quos or certain states of being so that you can not only relive it but you're given the opportunity to redo it and to do it better. When those energies were direct or moving forward, there is a certain level, I'm channeling you guys, so bear with me. There is a certain level of concrete expectation that comes through with that. And what that means is that we expect that to be our new status quo. We expect that to be our new foundation. We expect that the decisions that were made or the things that have happened, that that is what it is and now this is what it's going to be forever. And the truth of the matter is, is that spirit is reminding us that nothing lasts forever. Everything is temporary and things are always changing. The only thing that is constant is the fact that change is going to happen, can and will happen. It is a blessing to be able to be in a space where any change, disruption that has already occurred is still being given spirit's attention to tend to it again. That's a blessing. And I can see the aspects within yourself, especially with the emperor here and transformation, I can see the aspects within yourself that you have allowed to define you, the aspects within yourself that you have rooted yourself in and grounded yourself within, the future that you have committed to building for yourself, 
the person that you are now, the relationships and the commitments that is that you've made, whether they're romantic, platonic, business or whatever, how they have evolved and shifted and trans, you know, transitioned and transformed into what they look like now. It's, I'm being reminded again, like, it's by the grace of God and by the grace of the divine that we're invited to revisit and retrace our steps on the path that we've already taken to see what we have lost and to see how what we've lost or what we've said goodbye to or, or the things that we just kind of like signed, sealed, and delivered, how that might have changed and evolved just as we have. And at the time of this full moon happening in the sign of Capricorn, we are invited into a new state of being and belonging. I love that for us. It says that these eclipses that have already happened and occurred created a lot of disruption in our lives. And that disruption encouraged and sparked my evolution. And in those moments and that time away or this time of reflection or time of growth, whether it was public or private, I changed a lot. I am the same person from maybe from how you see me, but internally I'm so drastically different. What I want and what my needs are and what, who, I, who and what I invest my energy in is so different because of these circumstances, because of these events that have occurred. And parts of me, this is me channeling you guys, it's not me speaking my truth, although I can relate to this message as well. Parts of me have died. Parts of the things that I have held on to have been pried from my grip. Things that I once valued or put as priority number one are now priority number 10 or no longer a priority in my life, period. Never, never saw that coming. So I can see that at the time of this full moon, especially with this Capricorn energy here, Capricorn, the moon being in the sign of Capricorn and the sun sitting in the sign of Cancer, how far you, we, me, they, him, her have evolved. And this full moon calls that out. It pulls it out. It lays it on the table. Spirit is saying, be curious and ask questions. What was your experience? What happened for you? And with that, I want you guys to know that you're going to be met with defensive energy. With that, you're going to meet people that are on guard and aspects of themselves that are blocked, not because they're negative, not because they're toxic, but because they are still in a state and space of self-protection. And you yourself might be feeling this. You yourself might be the example of this. But it's because the journey up until this point has required a lot of transition, shifting, releasing, surrendering. And that is a painful process as a human being to go through. That's really tough. Especially if you're one of the ones who has rooted your identity or rooted, rooted your belief or rooted your faith into things that are actively crumbling around you, outside of your control. And you're left vulnerable, weak, shaking, lonely, isolated. And all that you have that you're holding on to is a fallacy, a vision. Not a vision that is a prophetic vision, but a vision of how you want the world to see you and what you believed about yourself. And that is tough. But at the time of 
you know, this moment in history, spirit doesn't want you to embed yourself and to grow like a twisted up fingernail <laughs> in a way that is congested to or congest your own growth, your own being, your own evolution. It truly does want you to ascend to a higher vibration. And not only that, but when you relinquish what spirit is actively pulling out of your life and surrender to it and allow yourself to grow within it and feel what you're feeling but also not to internalize it and take it personally you then will have a, a massive shift a massive shift the time of the full moon that is put on the table that is called into the question and you are guided once again to be curious and to ask questions. And you are invited to have questions asked of you. And you are guided to not be completely defensive, but to be transparent, to consider being more vulnerable, to consider your authentic truth and to speak that. You may know your authentic truth, but are you sharing that? And with Capricorn, Capricorn is our commitments, our structure, our routine, our foundation, our business, our government. And to be able to be in a, a space and a place in history and in your life right now where you can build a new foundation based upon authentic truth, authentic transparency, and high vibrational love and state of being is one of the greatest blessings that we will ever experience throughout history. That's where we're at right now. And it can be and has been a painful process. I will not take that away from any of us. It is true that it has been. I can see that. But I can also see the potential. I can also see the reward. I can also see the lesson. Not only do I see it, but I understand it. Not only am I understanding it, but I'm living it too. And with that, we invite divine's grace, divine's blessing, divine's truth, divine's initiation into our lives and anything that impedes us along the way is simply hurting us, I don't like to use that word hurting, but guiding us into a new world. Where are you going to see this in your life? Everywhere? You're gonna see this everywhere. You're, it's not gonna be just one area of your life. I know typically I tell you guys to look at what Capricorn rules within your chart, absolutely. Do that. Because there will, chances are there will be a higher concentration of this energy there in that area of your life. But the thing is that we're working with energy and energy doesn't confine or contain itself into any one thing it finds all the different ways that it will express itself that it fits into and I see that this is going to happen in all areas of your life if it's happening in your relationships it's probably also showing up in your health if it's happening in your health it also shows up in your ability to manifest if it's showing up in your ability to manifest and it's also showing up in what's valuable to you if it's showing up in what's valuable to you it's also showing up in your subconscious if it's showing up in your subconscious, it's showing up in your mental reasoning. It shows up everywhere. The cards that it is that I'm pulling for you guys, and I want you to see this, because you should. I want you to. You might not know now, but you will. Do something new. Something different. You were born with that it quality. Karma is on your side. Everyone is doing their best and hubba hubba. You know that dreamy look of deep, deep, soulful love you've sometimes seen, sometimes seen in the eyes of another as they gaze into your own? Expect a whole lot more of it. Why I want to emphasize the word sometimes is because the times when you don't see that soulful state of love being is because that person has retracted back into the lower vibrational 
um, aspects and perspectives of ourselves that show up from time to time, no matter how much you're pursuing a high vibrational life and living. Uh, it's as human beings, we we take a few steps forward, and then sometimes we take a few steps back, and we can, no matter how good our intention, we can put pain on pain and suffering on ourselves and also on other people and that's why sometimes we see that soulful love sometimes we see the best of ourselves sometimes we can give the best of ourselves sometimes we're getting the best from other people but those times when we don't it's those times that we don't that's when real suffering can occur because we we saw the best of this situation we saw the best of that circumstance and we kind of wanted to trust that this was it and then when we saw that it was faulty that it failed and that it fell apart then we say i knew it I knew that this was going to happen and I'm going to retract back into my pain, painful wounded state of being and then we spill that over into the next thing, the next person that talks to us and they're like, oh, didn't expect that. This person is someone that I love, I trust. Or all human beings are the same or all this and, and all of it came from one energy that got defensive, one energy that was feeling some type of way, one energy that needed time to process it. I love my little chickies. And the reality is, is that everyone is doing their best. And if that is truly the case, and I believe that, I believe that, I believe that, if everyone is doing their best, then we have to give. Yes, come through storm. If everyone is doing their best, then what we are going to do differently is to appreciate them for being where they're at not take internalizing it for not being what we want and expect and see for them and respecting the fact that that's where they're at or where you are at and i want to challenge every single one of us to root ourselves again in this new world state of being which is a higher vibrational space of love but also boundaries to protect what it is that we how far we have come. I want you guys to bring this energy into your career, your business, your purpose, your relationships, your health, your how you take care of pets, how you take care of others, how you take care of the earth, how you take care of your mental health, asking for help. King of Pentacles just showed up reversed. I love this storm for us right now. Venus opposing Pluto retrograde. Ooh, Venus opposing Pluto retrograde, my loves. Venus in the sign of Cancer. She wants nurturing support. She wants to be nourished. But she has attachment issues. You hurt yourself with that. You hurt others with that. I want them to see and feel and know how much I love them or how invested I am in this opportunity. It's like, release it. Six of Pentacles, Four of Wands reversed. The Emperor showed up once again and also Page of Cups upright. I want you guys to set intention for what, I know this sounds so cliche, but I want you guys to set intention for what it is that you really want within your life. You guys are like, I've been doing that. No, what you really want. If you're setting intention for a home, a house, what you are really setting intention for is a feeling of sense of belonging and security and a sanctuary. Set intention for that. What is that sanctuary and that safe, that feeling of safety? What does it feel like? Or maybe the home represents a family, people that, a community, like a feeling of giving, taking, and receiving. Like, so not only are you calling in what you want, the surface level of it but the spiritual the emotional the vibrational level of it you're also calling that in if it's a relationship I want to have marriage union it could be that you really want yeah by all means ask set set intention for that because also Capricorn rules those um, binding agreements those contractual agreements but also that marriage is a space that it is that you belong to, a safe space where you can give and receive love and, and lean on someone, someone that is consistent, someone that you can trust. Or maybe someone that you can express, you know, explore the world with, partnership, companionship. Where are you guys going? What are you guys doing? What are you doing? I never know what she's doing. What movie is that from? 
three of pentacles it's the things that are working with you that are collaborating with you that are you are in alliance with that was at the root of this um deck alliance what are you harmonizing with Now that Mercury is direct and trine, ooh, I, I say that with love, and trine Saturn retrograde, you're going to really start making some permanent bonds, commitments that you've been wanting for a long time. And if it's not called into action, meaning put on the plate or put on the table at the time of this full moon, call it in, manifest it. Four of Pentacles. This is energy that's not going anywhere. It's not pride away from you. Karma is on your side. Knight of Wands. I see this coming in fast, rapid, active. And honestly, give gratitude for the Uranus square Saturn retrograde transit right now that's happening right now. If it wasn't for a challenge like this or challenging energy like this, the energy would just be... It wouldn't have the aggression, the spark to force change, which is exactly what it is that you're wanting. Change in your circumstances. Well, change for the better, but a change nonetheless, regardless, right? So when you're calling that in, don't don't uh, get don't get shut down. Be inspired. This is for your own evolution, for your own growth, for your own initiation into you know exactly to be who and what you want six of cups keeps coming up something from the past is coming in whether it's a soulmate a twin flame old opportunities someone from the past or just feelings of gentleness and kindness and compassion and nurturing especially with the sun now sitting in the sign of cancer at the time of this full moon and death Woo! and venus moving to the sign of cancer her last final days in the sign of cancer it's beautiful it's beautiful i love it for us i do I was just about to think about the impediments, the things that impede us. We have the devil card and the empress. I see two things with that. I see, go ahead and explore with a curious mind your addictions because that shows you where the evolution and the initiation has already occurred. And then also on top of that, I see you breaking free from it. And regardless of how you identify, I see you as worthy of being receptive, worthy of receiving, worthy of, you know, more, just more, more, better, quality over quantity, but quality, you know, on what is actually coming in. Eight of Cups, don't be afraid of the things that it is that you're called to let go of and say goodbye to. It could be anything. Two of Cups. So guys, I had to quickly change my battery, but one of the last things that I was saying is the Two of Cups is here showing up, as well as the Sun card. And this is about, again, anything that we're saying goodbye to, it's because we've already aligned to something for our highest and greatest good that is a better match for us, a better vibrational match. And worthy, big time worthy of investing in, especially now. And not to say that the things that we have already said goodbye to you aren't worthy it's just the fact that they might have evolved into or onto a different path or into a different person that is no longer the same type of connection here and with alliance showing up and with temperance card show oh my gosh and with the lovers card showing up and then Im immortality generosity love and desire pilgrimage is one of the last cards of the chariot you guys Something here is talking about massive, massive, divine commitment, partnership, alliance. And it's about things coming together. It's about things coming together and supporting us. It's very divinely guided. It's very promising. You might not know now, but you will. Something is being sparked big time at the time of this full moon. Page of Wands, I literally just said sparked. Tower card, Eight of Wands, coming in fast. What is it? I want you guys to shuffle from your own cards and tell me what you guys see. I talk about this a lot in the Sacred Circle guys the lovers card just showed up this is huge 
and also the Six of Wands and the Eight of Cups. Beautiful. What we don't talk about enough is the journey of the person who's going through the Six of Wands. I always call this my PTSD card. It's the things that we had to get to in order to get to where we are. And it's great to be celebrated in, in that and acknowledged for the journey and how far we have come, especially with the Eight of Cups here, but also the memories are still there. So when you see that and when you're lining up with other people and other things, have grace and kindness and compassion towards them and be patient. Be patient. Ask questions, especially with the temperance card. It doesn't need to be forced together. It's really generous and sweet and kind and actually of love to ask questions instead of automatically assume. And the thing is, is that you want people, things, and circumstances that do the same thing for you. It's not just you doing it, especially with the Six of Pentacles that showed up. Okay, one last thing I want to shuffle for here. I say one last thing, but is it? Angels and guides from the highest lights of the universe, I invite in your wisdom right now. Give it to us with clarity in a way that protects us, guides us to what spirit wants and sees for us. Wow. The order card just jumped out. Where are we headed? Wow. Children keep showing up a lot lately. The stork. The stork and the child. So there's a high potential. And also my extra joker card here. That's my yes. My massive yes. Um, and then we also have this two of swords energy. So I'm just seeing that the things that were once blocked, they kind of open up and recycle themselves. Like they kind of show up again in a different way. Only they're just new. They're new. They're new. They're different. They might... It could be the same person, but is it the same person? It could be a job opportunity, but is it is it totally new? There's something similar about it, and just love, my loves. This love card, you know, this energy of love, soulmates, is, you know, love and desire, Gemini energy. We were manifesting this earlier, too. Yep, a lot of abundance, a lot of security. You're going to have to let me know. You're definitely going to have to let me know. Okay, one last thing. I knew it. I knew I wasn't done. One last thing. We want to look at the Gilded Lenormand. Any last messages for us that we needed to hear right now? This breeze is amazing, by the way, you guys. Oh, as my camera moves. I don't think that the wind would have been able to do that. This It was a breeze. It wasn't a wind. I think something just moved my camera. Oh. It was in the punishment, the things that we look at as, as a punishment, that provided us growth, knowledge, and wisdom that would have been locked away from us. And now it defines our choices. Now it helps us to choose better. Now it helps us to, you know, find where we belong better. We have the lily here. We have the choice, the staircase, the whip, the book, and the home. So Spirit is really saying that, you know, honestly, these things that have already occurred events that have already occurred that have been painful or hard to accept or hard to deal with. You guys, the stork is here again. There's more to this. Oh, oh, oh. We have the stork here. Something is returning back into your life. We have the sun card here, which we also have the sun card here as well. We have the well showing that there's more to this. You might not know now, but you will because there's a truth sitting at the bottom of this well. And... I just lost my cards. Well, it was the heart. The heart was here. Oh, it's right here. The heart and the clouds. It's what you truly, truly love, what truly, truly loves you. It chooses you just as much as you choose it. And I want that for all of us. So go ahead and manifest that. Feel free to go ahead and let me know down in the comments what you're shuffling and pulling from your own tarot cards, what you're feeling as you look at your chart. And then I also want to create a safe, sacred space for us to talk about what it is that we're manifesting in our lives. 
and to leave those blessings down below. If you would like to join me on a more intimate dive in the tarot and esoteric symbolism and also astrology, this Sacred Circle Tarot School is open for new students and enrollment. Um, for anybody who is really interested in, in that, it really truly is a deep dive. If you guys have any questions, most of them can be answered on my website, bahadilife.com. But if there's anything that you have not seen answered there, please let me know by emailing me at info at bahadilife.com where me or my assistant will be more than happy to assist you. I think that's it. I'm sending you guys all of my love. I hope that you're well. Make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.